Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel, The Movie Canon. I am Giovanni and this is a brand new episode of Horror Talk. So I haven't done a Horror Talk episode in a few months, but it is October, it is October 1st, it is spooky season, it is horror season, Halloween season. So I'm kicking off Horror Talk again. Uh, I'm planning on doing a few episodes of Horror Talk throughout the month. I'm actually doing this now on video uh, before this horror icon election I used to do or have been doing for the last uh, like three or four years or so on my social media on Instagram where you go and vote for the the scariest horror icon and each year we we take in the votes and we choose one movie canon horror icon so I'm actually going to talk about uh, the election itself on video this is the first time that I'm doing that so um, we'll get into that in just a bit here uh, but uh, the polls are now open so you'll see a couple of uh, of uh, candidates there. So make sure to vote on Instagram so that we can select this year's horror icon. And I'm also doing a non-spoiler review of Saw X or Saw 10 uh, of the film. So no spoilers. And I'll get into that in just a moment here. And then also Halloween is getting a reboot. So we just had this trilogy of Michael Myers uh, films, whether you like them or not, we, we got these. And now the uh, and now the, the rights are actually being shopped around. So we'll talk about that in just a bit here as well. And we have this uh, Funko Pop giveaway. So I'll reveal who the uh, actual character is, but it is a horror season or horror themed, spooky themed character. So that will be the next Funko Pop giveaway, uh, which I'll give you guys more details towards the end of this um, of this video. OK, so that's kicking off a horror talk for the month of October here on my channel, The Movie Cannon. Thank you so much for watching right now, guys. And uh, like always, make sure that you are subscribed to uh, The Movie Cannon YouTube channel for future content, uh, giveaways and, you know, things like that. So subscribe to the channel. Okay, everyone, well, let's go ahead and get started with the first thing here. So, again, we're doing a non-spoiler review of Saw X or Saw 10. So, Saw X serves as both a direct sequel to Saw, the, the film that came out in 2004, so the first one, and a prequel to Saw 2, which came out a year later in 2005. It is directed and edited by Kevin uh, Gutert. I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right or not. And written by Josh uh, Stolberg and Peter Goldfinger. So, the film stars a Tobin Bell or Tobin Bell. Uh, as John Kramer and Shawnee Smith as Amanda, reprising the roles from the previous films. Uh, so is this going to be a see it, a stream it, or a skip it? You know, the movie canon rating system uses those three components there. So I'll give you my thoughts uh, on the movie uh, in just a moment. And like, like always, I separate these by positives, the pros, uh, the negatives, the cons uh, of the movie. You know, each uh, factor or elements that... Uh, leads to these positives or negative components there. Okay, so the positive things that I'm going to say about this movie is, is uh, the lead, uh, to Tobin Bell. And I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing his first name, but uh, I think it's Tobin? 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 Tobin Bell. So he is Jigsaw. He is John Kramer. Uh, his performance has always been good when it comes to these uh, Saw movies. Uh, there was never any complaints about his performance. I always thought he did a great job playing this character the difference here is that he is actually able to show a little bit more range in his acting abilities than the other saw movies uh, mainly because of a, a much stronger script and uh so i mean the, the actor is is obviously much older the first movie came out in 2004 so he's reprising uh the role as uh, john kramer again here and it's been like 19 years almost since the first movie and so he does look older but it actually works here because in the timeline he's actually uh, supposed to look uh, weaker and more frail because of the the cancer you know how it's progressed to a certain level that is getting close to ending his life basically so he actually looks the part so it does it's not distracting at all that he looks older because he is ill uh, so that works perfectly fine the other character here uh, Amanda which is played by um, uh, Shawnee Smith now she does look older, but uh, it just wasn't distracting to me at all. Uh, so th that that was perfectly fine. So I was fine with that. Uh, the next positive here that I'll mention here are the traps. So the traps 
the traps are always good when it comes to saw uh, that they always try to do things differently uh, they're a little bit creative with uh, the way that they do the traps make make things a little bit more um, interesting or uh, well later on in the movies they get a little bit more gory and things like that uh, so they're always good with that that hasn't changed in this movie either uh, the the traps are are effective uh, I would say that they're a little bit simpler in a way even though there are a lot of the traps in this movie that are definitely quite sophisticated or whatever the case but that's just the character himself that he's an engineer and and able to do these build these traps and things like that but I find it to be a little simpler even though the art could be like a little over the top sometimes but uh the next positive thing here i'll say which is this is the main thing you guys have been watching me my reviews and things like that the main thing for me for a movie and i think it's for a lot of people not just me but is of course the script the the story in this new saw film is by far the best one in years now granted that the, the bar is not that high but i can tell that the filmmakers here did put an effort a little bit more extra effort in the story here the characters the conflicts you know things like that i did kind of get a, a sense or a feeling that they actually put a bit more uh, attention to certain things there and um which turned out to um, a pretty good uh, story here good good script and yes the the saw franchise including saw x has its over the top moments like i mentioned a little earlier but but it's grounded enough that uh it still made sense to me uh, i will go as far as to say that the filmmakers made me more invested in in kramer and even amanda in this new movie also the victims are also pretty uh, nicely developed for, for the time that we have with them so you know overall when it comes to the, the story and the characters uh, they're much stronger here much better than other saw movies before uh like really if you were to compare this movie to uh any other saw movie with the exception of the first one because i would i would still say that the first one is probably the best one because of the novelty of things which i'll get into that in the negatives section in just a bit here but uh if you com compare those other movies like saw two three four five six seven eight nine or even some of those saw movies which are kind of like i think one of them was supposed to be a reboot which didn't really do much and then they went back to that that book of saw book, book of jigsaw movie with chris rock which is kind of weird seeing chris rock in a movie like this but when you look at all those other movies you can tell there there's there's a big difference between this one and those other installments so this one is definitely one of the better ones, and I would say this is the, the best one since the first Saw movie. Now, if you never ever liked Saw in the first place, if you saw the first one and you didn't like it then, I don't think this is going to change your mind. So, But if you did like the first one, I think, uh, I think you'll enjoy this one, especially compared to the other ones. Now, I'm going to get into the negative section here. So the negatives... Um, so the, there, there are a couple of negatives there. And uh, I would say that the main one here is, um, like I mentioned, that the, the Saw franchise sometimes uh, have their over-the-top moments. Uh, so definitely some more than others. And uh, Saw X does have them. Uh, some of the story beats are a bit too convenient uh, for, for my taste. But considering some of the insanity in the other installments, this one was still a bit more doable. So... Uh, yeah, like there was parts in the movie and the script that is like, okay, well, that was a bit convenient, but uh, we see that a lot in other movies, not just Saw, but just in general. There's a lot of things with the story that, okay, well, this is very convenient to move along a certain plot device, a certain resolution or whatever the case. So, uh, so yeah, the things being convenient, that, 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 I would say that's a, a negative, but it, it wasn't too bad that it would completely derail the movie for me at all. Another thing here, I'll say that when it comes to the negative components here, and, you know, this is the 10th installment of a horror franchise. And, you know, the novelty of it has disappeared. So some of the elements that make up Saw are, are definitely not new, or at least they're not presenting anything too drastically new here in Saw X. Uh, this, the only thing that you can do differently in a Saw movie is offer a better story, which I, I would say that they did here. And, you know, change up the traps, you know, be more creative and thinks about different ways to do these traps. Um, otherwise, there's not going to be anything drastically um, innovating in, you know, another Saw movie. But, uh, but yeah, so 
compare it to, let's say, the very first time we saw the first movie, uh, there's a novelty to it. There's something new about it, something different. Uh, so with this one, with the 10th one, you do lose a little bit of it. So ultimately, I enjoyed Saw X. It is a much better installment than the more recent films, for sure. And the script was surprisingly strong in this a new installment. So I'll say Saw X is a see it, and I'll give it a, a solid, strong B. So that's uh, Saw X. Again, this was a non-spoiler review of the movie, so if you haven't seen it, uh, I didn't really give them any I don't think I ever gave any spoilers here so so that's saw X grade B see it all right so now there's also some news some new information about the Halloween franchise Michael Myers so bloody disgusting provided us some information here and uh, so it looks like that the rights of uh, Halloween specifically of Michael Myers Halloween it looks like the rights are being shopped around so we had the trilogy from Bloom House and Universal Pictures uh, we just had this trilogy, you know, J Jamie Lee Curtis came back as Laurie Strode and we had that trilogy and uh, but that contract or that deal was only good for that trilogy. It was only for for three films, but it looks like uh, the rights are being um, shopped around now, but possibly another studio. And there's talk about possible uh, TV series instead of uh, another, you know, set of movies or, or, or it could still end up being another trilogy or whatever the case okay so let's get into some of those details here so the, the source here is a uh, blood a uh, bloody disgusting so in the headline as you can see here the feature of halloween uh malik akkad uh, i don't know if i'm pronouncing that correctly but is currently shopping the rights for film and tv so um we have here bloody disgusting can exclusively report this week that malik akkad's uh, tranka's international films is actively shopping the rights to the Halloween franchise around Hollywood. For clarity, while Miramax co-owns the film rights, Atrancas is the sole owner of all television rights. From what we understand, there's a massive bidding war going on right now for television rights with several different parties interested and vying for the chance to bring Michael Myers back to life. We're hearing exclusively that A24 and Miramax are the two main parties currently in battle for TV rights and that A24 is currently leading the charge. As you might recall, A24 recently won the rights to produce a Friday the 13th television series and is being made for the Universal owned Peacock. It's titled Crystal Lake. So uh, so yeah, so it looks like uh, from from what it sounds like, it looks like uh, some of the, the rights uh, are for TV, so I know in the past, especially when it comes to the uh, the third Halloween movie, the season of the witch, uh, it looks like they were starting this uh, like anthology type of thing, starting with that one, where they got rid of uh, Michael Myers and they used uh, you know some different type of story or some different type of uh, antagonist, I guess you can say, for that Halloween movie, and they decided that we're gonna get rid of Michael Myers and they did this movie, Halloween 3 Season of the Witch, which I was not a fan of and I just watched it recently, well recently I mean like last year and I still didn't like it, but um, so th they may be trying that again in a TV series uh, maybe they want to do like a Halloween anthology, I don't really think that's gonna be the case because I think the the um, the pull or the drive here for Halloween, the Halloween franchise is Michael Myers so I don't think that you could uh, or I don't think viewers are really interested in seeing a Halloween series or Halloween TV series that doesn't have Michael Myers. So that's why I'm not sure if they're going to do this anthology thing. But uh, obviously the uh, the Bloomhouse uh, trilogy that we already had, uh, that's done with. So it could be A24. It could be Miramax again. It could be maybe Paramount. Who knows who would actually take this over. But let's see if there's anything else here in this article here. So we have here last year's Halloween Ends was the 13th installment in the Halloween franchise, which today has never made its way to the small screen. Could Michael Myers return with a television series or is another film reboot next up on the menu? Only time will tell. So, uh, so yeah, so that's the, the news that we have here uh, for Halloween, for the Halloween franchise. What are your thoughts on this? Uh, would you rather see... Uh, a TV series? Would you rather see another like film trilogy of Halloween? And would you rather have like an anthology type of thing like they did with uh, Halloween 3 season of The Witch? Or do you want Michael Myers?
I personally think that they should bring Michael Myers. Um, I think the Halloween franchise now uh, is represented by Michael Myers, so I think Michael Myers should definitely be there. Uh, but we'll see what happens. So I'll definitely keep you guys up to date. So that's the most latest news about uh, Halloween, uh, Michael Myers. And now I'm going to move on to the, uh, the horror icon election. So as I mentioned uh, before, I've been doing this horror icon election for the last like three years or so. So mainly I was doing on, on Instagram. Uh, I never like recorded a video or anything like that. This year I decided to like just talk about some of the uh, the, the polling and the, the characters that are in involved in this horror icon election. So it started today. So if you go to my social media, if you go to Instagram, so we're going to uh, narrow it down as to who's gonna be this year's horror icon uh, for the movie canon's um, election. So uh, now you would have to go again. So the polls, like I said, are now open. Uh, so you just go to the Instagram, to my Instagram page at the movie canon, uh, follow the page, subscribe to the channel, uh, so you can vote. So uh, the last three winners. So the uh, the first time I did this, uh, Freddy Krueger won. So he was the uh, that year's movie canon horror icon a winner. The second year, Pennywise won. And then the third year, which was last year, Freddy regained the title for uh, horror icon, the movie canon um, of the year. So is it going to be Freddy again? We'll go back to Pennywise. Will it be Michael Myers? Will it be someone completely different? Who knows? But uh, it's up to you guys. So you go to Instagram, vote there. I'll be having this horror icon election throughout the month. Most of the month, I'll have some kind of a poll uh, going on. And then narrowing it all the way down to the ultimate fourth annual horror icon winner. So... And your con leave the comments below and say make your predictions so make your predictions in the comment section below who, who do you think is going to win uh it is up to you it is up to you guys to vote just make sure to go to instagram because i'm only doing the poll on instagram uh, i don't think i can really do it on youtube but uh mainly it'll be on on instagram so definitely check that out but uh, the main thing here what i wanted to mention here i am going to talk about uh the first few uh, candidates for this horror icon election uh, I'm not gonna be able to do it for all of them because there's a lot of them uh, there's gonna be like uh, two rounds a day I think so just to kicking things off you know to kick things off here for this horror icon election I am going to talk about these first two and these first two here uh, this is the first time that they're actually in this movie canon horror icon election um, well, one of them because the character didn't exist the first time that I did it, which was in 2020. Uh, so this is a Pearl. And then we have Art the Clown. Now, last year, by the end of the Horror Icon election of 2022, towards the end of it, I just asked uh, on my social media on Instagram if they felt that Art the Clown um, is now at the status of horror icon that he could be in this election and you guys voted yes so starting this year 2023 art the clown from terrifier has joined this election and pearl pearl same thing now pearl i just recently asked on my instagram page if she should be a part of the horror icon election uh, i think it was just like last week that I asked and she did win so a lot of you guys do believe that she's you know scary enough good enough to be part of this horror icon election so I'm starting off with these two okay so I'm gonna just briefly talk about these characters here real quick so like I said I'm not gonna be able to do that for all of them but uh, kicking things off I'm getting this information from you know the internet so uh, we have Art the Clown is a fictional character in the Terrifier franchise and related media he first appeared in the, the short films The Ninth Circle, which was in 2009, and The First Terrifier, uh, well, at least it says, and Terrifier, 2011. 
before making his feature film debut in All Hallows Eve in 2013. So when I mentioned the first Terrifier, actually they're talking about the, the short films, not the actual movie, which I'll get into that in a bit. In these early appearances, Art was portrayed by retired actor Mike Gianelli in the Canon Terrifier film series. David Howard Thornton was cast in the role portraying Art in Terrifier, which is the first film that came out in 2016, and last year's Terrifier 2. Now, I know they're working on Terrifier 3, or um, I don't know if they're actually working at this instance, this moment, or this week or anything, but I know that they have already set a release date of October of next year, 2024, for Terrifier 3 to come out. So there's definitely going to be another Terrifier movie. And if you haven't seen these movies, these are super, super, super violent. Um, very, very gory. And I mean, I, I liked, I, I would say that I liked them overall. Um, Terrifier 2, I did, I did like it pretty well as well. Um, but it's definitely not for everyone. Definitely not for everyone. As we move to Pearl. So again, I'm getting this from the internet. So Pearl, subtitled an extraordinary origin story uh, this is a 2022 american slasher film directed by ty west co-written by west and mia goth so this is really talking about the movie pearl which came out last year now we have mia goth who reprises her role as the title character and featuring david uh, Cor Corinswet, uh tandy white matthew sunderland and emma jenkins pearl in a su in supporting roles a prequel to x 2022 and the second installment in the X film series it serves as an origin story for the title villain whose fervent aspiration to become a movie star led her to committing violent acts on her family's Texas homestead in 1918 so the actor that I mentioned earlier uh, David uh, Corinswet I'm pretty sure I'm mispronouncing that David Corinswet or Corin Sweat. Maybe it's Corin Sweat. Uh, so he's actually playing, uh, he was selected by James Gunn to play the new Clark Kent, new Superman. So just a little fun fact there. So uh, so again, Pearl versus Art the Clown. Who do you think is going to win? You can make the choice. Vote on my Instagram page at the Movie Canon. And who knows, maybe one of these two will end up taking it all the way and become this year's movie canon icon winner so the next one these are the only t remaining two that i'll be talking about here today is uh we have chucky versus the mummy so a little bit a uh, quick summary of each of these two characters so a lot of us already know chucky from the movies and so forth so we have charles lee chucky ray is the main antagonist of the Child's Play horror franchise. Chucky is portrayed as a vicious serial killer who, as he bleeds out from a gunshot wound, transfers his soul into a good guy doll and continuously tries to transfer it to a human body. He later decides to transfer his soul across numerous doll bodies, each with their own memories, in an attempt to take over the world. So that's Chucky, and like I said, a lot of us know him. So, uh, I know the last few years in the past, he's uh, advanced to several um, rounds and so forth. But um, I guess we'll see what happens this time because we have a few more new candidates this year. Uh, and then Chucky is going against uh, the Mummy or Emotep, as he's also known here. So, he is the main antagonist of the 1932 film so uh, the, the picture that you see here that is from the 1930s movie but he's also the the antagonist in the 1999 remake and it's 2001 sequel the mummy returns and then sophia uh, butella plays a female version of this character named uh, amanette in the 2017 re reboot which sucked by the way i didn't even finish watching it uh it's the one with uh, tom cruise not a good movie. Uh, Imhotep is loosely inspired by the historical figure Imhotep, a noted uh, po polymath and counselor of the pharaoh Djoser in the 27th century BC. So, uh, so yeah, so that's the uh, horror icon election. So those are the the first four 
uh, icons that are going to start this uh, or going to kick off this horror icon election. So make sure to vote there. And uh, I'm planning maybe by the end of the month, hopefully I'm able to do a video or maybe even in the middle of the month, I'll still be able to do like a nice little roundup, like a little summary of what the polls have been doing with the candidates, maybe the ones that have been eliminated. Uh, maybe maybe you don't agree with some of them or whatever the case. So uh, so definitely keep an eye out for that. So I'll have a few episodes of, of horror talk and so forth. So so subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And uh, let me see if there's anything else here. So I mentioned earlier that there is a new Funko Pop giveaway, and this is a horror or Halloween spooky season themed Funko Pop giveaway. And uh, I'm going to announce this new giveaway uh all the the same rules apply like before if you've entered one of my funko pop giveaways uh you're pretty familiar with the way this goes so not really many changes on that so the actual uh pop here for this giveaway is vampire jack so jack skellington as a vampire so he's going to be this new funko pop giveaway and um I'll keep him on, I'll keep him on here for a few weeks or so, maybe throughout the month of October. And uh, you know, the minimum entries, I still need them. Uh, must have a mailing address with the United States. Must be a subscriber to the YouTube channel, The Movie Cannon, or, or a follower on Instagram, The Movie Cannon. So you can possibly win this uh, Vampire Jack of Funko. So this was the uh, the horror Halloween themed the Funko Pop. So this is it. So. So yeah, so go to, uh, I'll be posting something on, on social media um, so you can, you know, start entering or whatever the case might be. Or if you want to uh, submit uh, the, the comments that you usually have to put in for uh, the giveaways, you can leave the comment here. Um, depending on when you watch this, uh, the actual uh, post like this may not be on, on Instagram, like I said, depending on when you watch this. So there you go, everyone. So that was my uh, episode of Horror Talk. So uh, thanks so much for watching here. And again, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. And uh, vote for this horror icon election from the movie canon. Who do you think is going to win? Um, you know, Freddy Krueger has won two times out of the three times I've done this. So he's trying to retain his title. So is he going to be the, the, the champion again? Or if someone else is going to take it away from him. Uh, surprisingly, Michael Myers has never won it. Uh, some of the other ones like Jason, Leatherface, they've never won it. Uh, maybe Art the Clown. Art the Clown is new in this election. So maybe he's going to take over. Who knows? It's all up to you guys. So go to my Instagram page. Vote. But that's pretty much it, everyone. So that will conclude today's video of new episode of Horror Talk. And uh, I'll see you guys uh, next time.